The company Solar States is teaming up with the Philadelphia School District to help prepare students for careers using solar energy. Solar States flipped the switch of the largest solar panel array in Philadelphia. Welcome back to another episode of Yo Sun. Welcome back to another episode of Yo Son. I'm your host, Micah Goldmarkel, here with Jared Pashko. And today on the show, we've got two awesome folks from Hope Works welcoming Ona and Dan to the pod. How's your days been going, guys? So far, so good. Yeah, good. Excited to be here. Good. Well, we're excited to talk to you, uh, learn a lot more about HopeWorks. And HopeWorks is a really, really cool organization. So who should I hand it off to to give the best description of what HopeWorks does? I'm happy uh, to take that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, my name's Anna Jones. I'm the director Anna. of community partnerships at HopeWorks. So what HopeWorks does in a nutshell is just work to get young people into living wage employment. And so for us, the quickest way for us to do that is through tech and paid tech training. So we enroll young people ages 17 to 26 into our tech training program. We have an office in Camden and in Kensington. We enroll them ongoing. So it's not like cohort style. It's the minute we have a seat open, the minute we're looking to fill that seat immediately. And so our first section of our program is the training. That's anywhere from six to eight weeks. So young people are learning a vast amount of skills, JavaScript, HTML, they're building websites, um, they're doing mapping, they're coding, but they're also doing some of that behind the scenes work of professional development. So mock interviewing, resume building, networking opportunities, speaking engagements, thanks to Dan and his team. And then once they're finished their initial training, they transition into our internships. So HopeWorks runs social enterprises out of our space with the sole purpose to employ young people. So they're with us in their internship for six months and they're furthering those skills that they learned in that initial phase of the inter- I'm sorry, of the training room. And so as they're getting more skills, as they're developing themselves even more, HopeWorks is there to support them throughout their journeys. And then they leave HopeWorks with living wage employment. And for us to count it as a win, it has to be around $43,000 a year or more. That's awesome. What what a great, cool mission. But I want to back up for a second to one thing you said, because it's pretty different from uh, the way that I've seen job training go, which is to say you have rolling admission that people can just sort of jump in. On, On the one hand, great, right? I'm sure you can get a lot more people in because you're working around their schedule, which is super cool. On the other hand, man, that must be a logistical lift. So how do you handle that? Yes. Uh, Logistical lift is a really great way to put it. So my (laughs) team and I, we handle all recruitment and enrollment. That's a part of our, our team as the community partnerships team. And so it's so complex. Uh, We have partners that refer to us. A lot of our young people, I would say most of our young people do our recruitment. All of our recruitment or primarily is word of mouth. So other young people who are like, hey, HopeWorks has got me this job. They can get you this job too. And so originally when I first started HopeWorks four years ago, a young person could come in and tour our space on a Monday and start on a Tuesday. But since our expansion and grown so much, we now have a waiting list of about 130 young people. And so it's gone from maybe one day to two days to about like four weeks. So we try to keep them engaged. We make sure that HopeWorks knows about them and we're thinking about them and you're always top of mind for us. And then, as I mentioned, as soon as that spot opens up, my team is on it. They're like, hey, we have this spot. You want to come in on Monday? And they're like busting the doors down to get in. Wow, that's so cool. And so how can you explain to me also the, the job placement piece um, in a little bit more detail? So how do you make sure that they're um, making that living wage, but also do you track how long they're in the position for? And, you know, just just put some some more meat on that bone there. 
Yeah. So I'm actually going to let Dan answer this because his role plays such a major part in our job placements and with our employment partners. So I'm going to let him take that one. Thanks, Anna. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they're reporting too. just to kind of clarify, like it's not like you can hop in and out any day at any time. Like our Hope Works and adults in the training room are coming to us Monday through Friday, nine to four. They're reporting to work just like they would any other job. It's helping not just with the muscle memory of like reporting to work, but also they're getting such valuable experiences in professional development, workforce development, exposure, client facing experience, all of the above, right? That transition from training room to, we call them internships. You're a GIS team associate, a web team associate, uh, maybe back in our training room, leading other young um, adults and kind of being a, you know, the young professional that, that provides peer peer support. That's that six month stage, that's transitional employment. Um, and what it does is it provides really valuable client facing experience. So my team, I'm fortunate enough to, to work with Sakina and patients and the sales and marketing team are actively doing business development, relationship building, bringing in actual projects. It's not this, oh, you're a cute organization, do great work, here's $2,500, pat you on the back. We're doing large projects for Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 companies, mid-sized, small, wow. as well, nonprofits. But we're doing real work. And what that does is it helps that transition. So if we're working for American Water, for example, on a bunch of different projects, um, you know, the young adults are getting to engage with individuals at American Water. And after six weeks, three months, four months of working on a specific project, providing real business services, um, real needs, American Water says, hey, Ashley's amazing. Like, we know that she can do the work because she's demonstrating it on a day-to-day -day basis. She gets us our communication style. Like, she understands, you know, what we're doing. Nothing is guaranteed, but we'd like to invite Ashley to apply for this position because we think it makes sense. So it's almost like a try before you buy it. So for our great. client, our, our employment partners often are our social enterprise clients where we're providing them services. Um, but then we also have a, an amazing team. So our workforce solutions team, Jay, Reese, and Grace are working with organizations that have talent needs. Maybe it's a direct hire. Maybe it's a one-off position. They're like, hey, we need somebody that's um, you know, in customer service or IT help desk type of role or QA. Um, so, for example, Holman, Holman in uh, South Jersey, Automotive. Holman's a huge organization, incredible. And they've hired a business analyst. They've hired a customer support person from us recently, somebody that's focused on QA. Um, and it's because they had a talent need and they worked with our Think of them as like a no fee staffing and recruitment team. So the whole mission of HopeWorks is to get young adults jobs, right? We don't want to be in the way of getting them jobs. So we have a dedicated team that's actively looking at job boards and doing relationship building with organizations and their HR teams to identify um, what we'll talk as like emerging talent positions or you know, you know intro to technology or customer service. We've been even expanded into healthcare and um, looking for those roles that would be a good fit for our young adults and then working as a partner with their HR team and their hiring manager team to ensure that that transition is successful, that young adult is having success within that position, they're meeting or exceeding the responsibilities and that the hiring manager and that department is happy with them. And the not so secret agenda is the Ashleys of the world, the Jalen's of the world, we want them to do so well that the organization comes back and is like, where can we find more Ashleys? Where can we find more Jalen? So That's great. they're all our best internal champions. And and Micah, the last thing I'll share is we track everything. Oh my goodness, hope works. Mm -hmm. Like Dan Roten, when he hears this, will smile about our tracking. Uh, data. Know, uh, data, big yeah. data. Yeah. It's data. We want to know what our job placement rate is. We want to know the retention rate. Like it's mm -hmm. one thing for a young adult to go from $400 before the program to $43,000 after completing the program, right? That's awesome. And like, just mm -hmm. give that a pause. It's even yeah. better that they 12 months out are employed at a retention rate of over 90%. So not mm -hmm. only are they getting these jobs, but they're keeping the jobs and they're having success. And that's what is really transformative impact for not just them, but their families too. And I, I love to use the term like young adult, 17 to 26. 
A lot of the individuals that we support have very real responsibilities. They have families of their own. They have kids of their own. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. need to secure living wage jobs to help them kind of not only cement a foundation for themselves, but for many other people as well. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I love to talk to, because it sounds like we deal with people of similar backgrounds who are looking, you know, younger folks, uh, as you said, young adults. Um, we deal with some folks who may have had some issues in their background where, you know, they were involved in the justice system at one point or another. Um, as you said, young families uh, very frequently. And so we found that there are all these services, whether it's daycare for their children or uh, health care for a spouse or other person uh, in the household. Um, how do they get to the training? How do they get to the job? You know, how do they maintain good communication and, and keep a phone going and, and all of that stuff without changing phone numbers and jumping around? There's there's all of these issues that you, you really need to deal with. And I'd be interested to hear, A, how do you handle that? But B, where do you think that you can do better? Because we're always looking at spots where we're like, oh, you know, we wish we could have done this a little bit better. So uh, I guess that's one for you, Anna. What do you, what do you think about that sort of analysis of what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, all of our young people come in with their backpacks filled with things. Like young professionals carry these things with them from start to finish. And so when they start HopeWorks, and maybe even before they start HopeWorks, we try to get in touch with them to figure out what are the things that are going to prevent you from being successful in employment? We can give you this job that's $45,000 a year, but if you have nowhere to sleep, you're not going to maintain this job. You're going to get fired. Um, so we try to adjust these things early, as early as possible. So my team and I, Lauren and Loren, we work to create really robust and thoughtful community partners. So not just, hey, community organization that does health care, can I get some pamphlets and hand them out to our young people? No, it's not going to work. We need to form a relationship. We need to form a partnership. We need you to champion us the way that we're going to champion you. And so we're building these very thoughtful and planned out relationships and partnerships. So that way our young people aren't waiting in line, getting further traumatized by this system when they're asking for help because they want to get to the next level. So they're going to this community agency that supports healthcare and talking to Angie directly to say, hey, Angie, my daughter needs a physical so she can get into daycare so I can secure for that permanent employment. How can you help me? And so that's how we address those things by like very careful and formal relationships, very formal partnerships. Um, we also want to make sure that like we're getting it in that sweet spot of time. So for example, young professionals who are outside of HopeWorks, who are looking to secure emergency housing, for example, those who are housing insecure, could take in Jersey, it could take anywhere from three to five days for someone to be placed in safe and secure housing. At HopeWorks with our partnerships, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. So that wow. process, thank you. Yeah, so that That's process awesome. needs to be as quick as possible because we don't wanna skip a beat while this young person is in our hands and ready to take that next step and ready to change their lives. So that's how we do that part. Um, the thing Hold that I, I can I Can I drill in? So how are you so effective at getting people housing so quickly? So a couple of ways, that initial part of that relationship building, I have what you want, you have what I want. How can we do this in a way that is changing our community and changing oh, our community? I gotta, I gotta interrupt, I'm sorry, but yeah. Housing is a tricky thing that we deal with. Like it is. How can, how do you know you have what they need? Like how do you have this backlog of housing that people can just go into? So what HopeWorks has been able to do is for some of these organizations that have housing, they have beds, but funding is limited or funding is like non-existent. They're waiting to get paid from some other funding source and it's pretty inconsistent. So what we've been able to do is with um, some of our generous donors, it's become a funding source for some of these shelters. So instead of a young person coming to a shelter and 
you know, social service is paying for their bed. Hope Works is paying for it. So it's guaranteed funding. It's funding on time for some of these shelters who have had a lapse in funding. And it's a guaranteed placement with the young person who is working. So another issue that some of these shelters have is we have a bunch of folks who are here and are unable to gain employment and gain living wage employment. So I have this young professional who is housing insecure, but is at Hope Works. So the chances of me moving them from housing insecurity to housing security is greater because they have an army of support behind them. So they're able to transition into transitional housing or apartments that these shelters have open, but can't successfully place people in because they don't have folks who are employed. That's amazing. So this sounds like an organization that isn't new, um, that you've developed these uh, relationships over time. So Dan, can you tell us a little bit about the history of HopeWorks and how you came to where you are today? Yeah, yeah, great question. Thank you, Mike and, and Jared. Um, a lot of the innovative resource navigation is thanks to Anna. So like in an incredible way, she joined us four years ago and she really like shaped how HopeWorks thinks about resource navigation, food access, mental health, housing, securing those essential documents, birth certificates, social security, ID, all those things so well thought out that like I, I can't help but smile and, and blush because um, it's just, it's incredible. Definitely a lot of work, bumps, trial and error for sure, but um, it's a very thoughtful uh, approach to resource navigation. So just got to give it up to Anna. HopeWorks, we're coming up on our 25th anniversary, which is really exciting. So we've been in Camden, specifically North Camden. I'll refer to it as a cozy row home in North Camden, a little bit smaller. Um, and we started out uh, just about 25 years ago. Um, and it's a really interesting kind of model because it has evolved over time. So initially Jesuit priests, one of them being uh, an indiv individual named Father Jeff, founded HopeWorks. And it was more of a safe place, tech training, after school-like program where young people from Camden, specifically North Camden, could come and learn technology, which is great. And that existed for about 10 plus years. That model slowly evolved though to incorporate the social enterprise businesses. Hey, not only can we teach tech training but we can provide services to other organizations to um, you know, provide revenue, to pay for our young adults in the training program, right? So a, a really innovative model, that social enterprise. So now we're floating. Dan Roten, our CEO, and a couple other key staff members joined you know, between 10 and 12 years ago. And that's when things really took off, where we focused on not only the tech training and the social enterprises, but employment pathways, and really focused on having a young adult go from learning these high demand tech skills, receiving that really valuable um, you know, professional development, social emotional development, the academic support, that's something that we haven't even talked about, but a lot of our young adults or some of our young adults, I should say, you know, have dropped out of school, don't have their high school diploma, or dropped out of college. So we have a whole program that's focused on customize academic coaching and success to ensure that they're getting you know their their diploma they're getting their degrees if they're interested in college or having support which is really huge um but here comes you know some uh, dan roten and some senior leadership that are saying there's a potential here for us to not only change you know um the, the skill sets of these young adults but to change their lives and to really provide living wage careers and oh by the way where just, you know, five years ago, we were supporting about 55, 65 young adults a year. You know, we're now supporting well over 200 young adults a year, which is amazing. Um, wow, that is amazing. And That's job placement rates, you know, rolling because it's, it's throughout the year. But on a 12 month basis, we're, we're hitting well over 120, closer to 130 job placements, which is really exciting. Um, and that's, that's great. You know, five plus million dollars of wages being pumped back into the community. That's and that's great. something that, that is really meaningful to HopeWorks too. It's like, not only are we equipping young adults with the skills, we're helping them get jobs, helping them keep jobs, but those wages are going back into the communities they need to, into Camden, into Philadelphia, 
Um, even though we operate in Kensington, our young adults are coming from West Philadelphia, from North Philadelphia, from all over. We've had people come as far as Wilmington, Delaware, in New Jersey, in our Camden location, as far as Atlantic City. Like, there's a need for this program, um, and it's just great to see young people, given the opportunity, just excel. That's a that's really that's, that's really awesome. I mean, I've uh, I'll chime in here because, um, you know, this is so interesting. I've uh, all the job training, uh, some of the really technical skills, the resource navigation seems like you are really doing some cutting edge stuff. Talk to us a little bit about what um, supporting these young adults and um, with soft skills. Um, you know, one of the things that you alluded to earlier is so many folks coming into these programs are are coming with trauma and mm -hmm. with really challenging experiences that inform their their uh, life view and to kind of overcome that and change that seems like a really critical piece to being successful not only getting placed in a job but keeping that job uh, that's what i've seen from a lot of the folks that are going through our workforce programs um what's your experience been the, the emotional intelligence, the social skills, I mean, that's when we talk to employers, the tech training is great, right? And that, you know, that muscle memory of working is definitely helpful. Um, but the social skills is really what distinguishes a candidate and makes them to be a very attractive and employable candidate. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes a lot. Um, our career programming and, and the career readiness teams. So Lawrence and Fred and all of our career readiness coaches spend a lot of time helping our young adults um, with, you know, not just mock interview prep, um, but how they conduct and handle themselves, how they advocate and communicate. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot. It, it takes a lot of work. I think what helps accelerate that is because we have open enrollment, we have young adults starting each week. We also have young adults that are going into their internships each week, and we have young adults that are being placed in jobs each week. So if you start at HopeWorks, you see individuals who look like you, representative of your background, you may even know, and you see them you know, six weeks ahead of you, six months ahead of you. We have alumni that work at HopeWorks. We have alumni that come back. So you see the pathway, and I think that really accelerates yeah. The, the growth of a young adult, um, their investment in the organization. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a lot of goal setting. It's a lot of communication. Yeah. It's a hands-on. Like This is a, um, you know, in-person, full-court type of situation where you have to be hands-on with the young adult. Um, and you have to provide them external engagement opportunities. They have to leave that nest of hope works and go to a conference. Um, visit other organizations, you know, mm -hmm. talk to clients like our social enterprise clients and get real feedback. It's great, great when they hear positive feedback because that's motivating. It's really helpful when they talk and, and learn about areas of growth that they need to improve on and, you know, some of that constructive feedback. So there's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, but like anything, the more you nurture and the more you provide opportunity, the, the quicker the results. And yeah. we're also doing all of this from a trauma-informed lens. So mm -hmm. everything that we do, everything we breathe, how we operate comes from a trauma-informed space. So less of like, why are you not doing this? And like, what, what is preventing you from doing this? And more of what has happened to you and how can we support you through that? You're showing up in these job interviews and you're not doing the best. Okay, well, what's happening with you? What has happened to you in the past? And how can we walk alongside you to address it? So. Oh, that's a great, that's a great way of phrasing it. I really love that. And and I love the idea of alumni coming back. I we do that with our trainees. And I can't tell you when people see folks who have gone through the program and are now, you know, doing the thing that you're trying to tell the people they're capable mm -hmm. of doing, um, or you know, making them aware they're capable of doing. It's like it's a whole nother level of, of interest that people show, Oh, you know, Cottrell was there, or, you know, Rob yeah. was there. And now I can, I, I feel like I can do this now. It gives, 
so much confidence, I feel like. But I want to I want to circle back to a question that I asked a little bit earlier, because, again, we're always trying to think of ways we can either do better or add more services. So and I'd like to start with Anna. But Dan, I'd love to hear your feeling on that, too. Like, where do you think you can do better? Where what what additional services are you thinking that you might want to be able to provide so that you can have more success with these young adults? Yeah, so I would say for me and from my angle, we offer relationships and supportive services when it comes to mental health, but it's never enough. We have young people, we have around 67 to 80 young people who are actively en enrolled and engaged in therapy today, um, but it's not enough. And when you look at insurance and the systems that Medicaid recipients and Medicare recipients have access to when it comes to mental health care, significantly smaller, especially in Philadelphia and in the state of Pennsylvania. So um, when I think about additional services that Hope Works Young Professionals need, it's always going to be mental health. How do we deepen our mental health partnerships? How do we deepen relationships that can offer mental health treatment and access to some of these things that private insurance um, can only pay for and afford. So that's, yeah, that is my bread and butter. And that's always going to be what I go to. Yeah, young people want therapy. And if they want therapy, their first initial contact with the therapist is going to be the most important one. So how do we get them connected to quality therapists who can help change their lives as well? Great answer. Love that's that. like the mental yeah. health version of the 30 minutes to get housing. You know, it's like, yeah. we're going to make sure that you walk away feeling like this is the first hour of the rest of my life in like mm -hmm. solving these traumas. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's a and big, it's a big, uh, it's a big boulder. You guys are putting on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, in here. Big boulder. That's a great I way to do it though. That's it. You're, you're, uh, you're doing it. You're, you're, you're doing it. Not big. Yeah. You're moving that boulder up the hill. That's amazing. It's really, I'm like uh, over here amazing. taking notes. Like I have so much in, I'm so excited to see how some of the, some of the things that you're implementing can, can work in, in our workforce programs and, you know, yeah. And happy to share them, like happy to continue this conversation after. None of this is a secret. Like we are all working towards the same cause. So whatever we have is always open to you all. That That's a good segue for, for Michael, for my part of the question is I'm crushed as a compliment, but I'm crushed when people are like, oh, HopeWorks is this best kept secret. And I'm like, oh no. Cause they mean like, wow, you're being really effective. They also mean like, I never heard of you until. So I think, what I strive and one of the things that we want to definitely do a better job is more collaboration, right? Collaborating with other community partners, other nonprofits, other social enterprises to learn from each other, to share. Um, also more exposure, you know, in terms of thought leadership, like getting us out there, getting those individuals, our young adults, championing them for the ones that are interested to talk about their experience, um, to demonstrate their abilities. So one of the things that I, I think we could definitely do a better job of is sharing, you know, everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly of hope works for sure. Um, and more visibility. Um, so for something like just candidly for my specific job and role, we do such a great job of business development when we're out there on stage talking about the work that we do and having the credibility of the Comcast, you know, a client of ours and a, and a partner of ours or Subaru or Campbell's, um, you know, American Water. When we're on stage with them, when we're talking about those projects, talking about those employment partners and pathways, that helps us, right, with credibility. It helps them, too, in terms of like elevated brand awareness and the social capital that the social impact that they're, you know, that they're looking for. Um, so we need to do more of that. We need to grow our businesses too. Right now we have a GIS team and a web team. We have a HopeWorks training team as well that does some trauma-informed professional development. Um, but what else? Like technology is always changing. Um, so we want to continue to evaluate the businesses that we have and ensure that we're planning for the future so that we can stay relevant, that we can capitalize on opportunities and, and um, you know continue to explore because we're not doing business just to like bring in money. We're doing business to train young adults and to provide them employment pathways. So that's also the thing. It's like 
it's got to be the right business that leads to jobs, mm -hmm. um, that leads to you know further opportunities. Um, so it's constantly tinkering, mm -hmm. um, and that's fun. That's what kind of keeps this an ongoing fun challenge is what's next? What do we need to do? How does our training program need to change? And the technology training that they start with, what does that need to look like to actively reflect the job opportunities that are out there so that we make sure that we're, you know, listening to our employment partners and, and to companies out there and what their needs are and making sure that we're matching up our training and our business services to fulfill those needs. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, unfortunately, I have to admit, prior to sort of planning this podcast, I hadn't really heard of HopeWorks. And so we're going to give you the Yo Sun bump. Everybody who listens, the, our millions of listeners now are going to now know about um, HopeWorks. And for those of you out there in, in podcast world, go to HopeWorks.org. It's a wonderful website. Uh, I'm lo actually looking at it now. I love your uh, your slogan, Recode Your Future. I think that just speaks to everything that you're doing with the training um, and, and really impacting uh, people's lives. I even like your logo. I love how the O's sort of interlock. So go check out hopeworks.org. Uh, and right now we're doing this podcast sort of around uh, lunchtime and I'm a little hungry. It's making me think of food. So let's hear what you got for food recommendations mm -hmm around Camden or wherever you might live. Yeah, so I'm happy to start. Our Kensington office, when we were looking, I was like, fingers crossed, hoping that we would pick this location because it has the best coffee shop next door that has the best banh mi oh. sandwich. Oh, some banh mi. I love, I love yeah. banh mi, so let's hear it. What yeah, it's it? called Cafe Roasters. They're great okay. people, hey. great company. It's also attached to another nonprofit that I think the you guys might be interested in. Um, but definitely check out Cafe Roasters for their banh mi. Cafe Roasters, and where is that located? That's in Kensington, right on J Street with us. J Street. Okay. J Street in Kensington. Cafe yeah, Roasters. almost right on the corner of like Kensington Ave, J Street. There's another street. I'm blanking on the name there. There's like a three-way. You know how. Okay. Yeah. Kensington, uh, Kensington three-way intersection. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, Cafe Roasters is, is amazing. Obviously, like James Beard Award winning, you know, Cantina La Martina, like the, the Kensington food uh, scene is awesome. Camden too. Um, really love What's going on with Camden now in terms of restaurant revitalization and trying to encourage more people to visit the restaurants in Camden? Um, we have a lunchbox, which is really cool. It's right on the um, city hall like campus. Mm -hmm. It does great lunches. Um, and uh, we have Corinne's. Like, you have to visit Corinne's if you're coming yeah. to Camden. It's good. Corinne's. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and what's the, I, I'd like to get as specific addresses as possible. Where's Cor Where would we find? Corinne's? Oh, yeah. I don't know Corinne's address, but I'm happy to send it. I mean, is that, do, you, do you know the street it's on or anything? Is it like, uh, is it a hat map? Hat map, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, okay. yeah, like, uh, I'm going to cheat and like look at my, um, uh, yeah. It's in, in Parkside, it's in Parkside, um, in okay. the neighborhood Parkside in Camden. I have a good friend who lives yeah, next to Donkeys. Like Donkeys and Corinne's are like right there. Donkeys yeah. and Corinne's. Okay. Okay. Um, that's great. Uh, Jared, any places where you've uh, frequented? You've come up with some really good ones recently, so, too. So I don't think that I spoke about it on the podcast. I've been waiting. Um, I recently uh, found a very special pizza place in South mm -hmm. Philly. It's in uh, Passyunk, uh, in the Passyunk neighborhood. They refuse to get raided by Dave Portnoy on the one bite. Uh, everyone knows the rule challenge because they don't want to be overrun. They're running the pizza shop mm -hmm. out of a brewery. It's called CJ and D's pizza. Mm -hmm. CJ and D are husband and wife and they run um, Trenton style pizza shop. Um, mm -hmm. So Trenton style. Uh, I think uh, the cheese is on uh, uh, the, the sauce is on top of the cheese. Um, oh, so that? a little bit different, thin crust, delicious. You can order it in, take it out. They run out every day, so you know the dough's fresh. Mm. Phenomenal pizza. 
Uh, are you guys located? Do you both like live work in, in Philly or South Jersey, Philly? Like where? Yeah, we're we're both uh, actually within walking distance of our office. So we're at, you know, in the south or old Kensington area at uh, Jefferson and American Streets. That's our office location. And then we have a warehouse that and training center um, in the Bridesburg section at Juniata and Richmond Streets. Okay. I heard that um, Shaka Max and Pizza opened up in Port Richmond. There's another yeah, like uh, solid pizza place that is dressed. Yeah. Shaka Max is the best rated pizza in Philadelphia. Is it really? You know, like one, it, one of the top three. I think Shaka Max and, and Pizza Richmond are all the same ownership. And that's, mm -hmm. I got to give a shout out mm -hmm. to my man, Bob Shaw. I believe he's involved with that. Um, but they do, they do great, great pizza for sure. For sure. Well, thanks so much for joining us. This has been another episode of Yo Son. I'm your host, Micah Goldmarkel here with Jared Pashko. Peace out, y'all. Thanks, everybody.